Okay, history time. During the Great Depression in America in the 1930s, there was a backlash against the US's political system, not to mention the rise of fascism, which encouraged many people to sign up for the Communist Party of the United States, the CPUSA. America allying with the Soviet Union during World War II encouraged more people to promote an ideology that negates the capitalist system that plunged America into a recession in the first place. However, when the Cold War started, a war that America loved because it was highly profitable and most of the war was imaginary, this caused an anti-communist mindset amongst Americans, resulting in many people losing their jobs, their homes, and even their lives. Enter the Hollywood Ten. Ten screenwriters were blacklisted for labelling themselves as communists, and one of those writers is the subject of the biopic Trumbo. The Hollywood blacklist that took place between 1947 and ended in 1960 is a subject that Hollywood is embarrassed about, so it's surprising that it's being tackled in a mainstream movie with big stars attached and even some awards recognition, with Brian Cranston receiving a nomination for Best Actor at the upcoming Oscars. Is a lot of this attention coming from the fact that Hollywood wants to acknowledge their mistakes and pretend they're sorry, or is it because the movie itself actually delivers on a very dark time in the entertainment industry? Just after World War II, Dalton Trumbo is the highest paid screenwriter in the world, but his communist views, as well as supporting the production crew members in recent strikes, makes him a prime example of a supposed infiltration of America by the Soviet Union, as well as placing him under suspicion of sneaking communist subliminal messages in his films by the press, particularly by Hedda Hopper. Trumbo and nine other screenwriters are arrested for a year and put on a blacklist, preventing them from working in the industry. It's up to Trumbo and the few remaining screenwriters to fight against the system before the blacklist tears his life, both professional and personal, apart. Near the beginning of the movie, Dalton Trumbo meets with a studio executive who offers him a contract which will make him the highest paid writer in Hollywood, which means he'll be the highest paid writer in the world. He lives in a huge home with a pool, has numerous luxuries, etc. So when you start off with a character like that, it can be hard to sympathise with someone who has absolutely everything already. But what makes Dalton Trumbo such a wonderful protagonist, as well as just an admirable human being in general, is that he uses his influence, wealth and fame for the greater good. He joined in on picket lines when set builders in Hollywood were on strike. He'd support the underpaid people working in the industry and acknowledged their importance, and he'd support his friends and be very charitable to those who needed help. Essentially, Dalton Trumbo is a character worth rooting for, which makes the conflict throughout the movie all the more effective. Because make no mistake, the Hollywood blacklist was a terrible thing that was done out of an insubstantial fear of a threat that America assumed existed. And watching Trumbo in this current 2016 political climate makes it all the more effective as many of the newsreels and pieces of fascist propaganda bear a very strong resemblance to what is happening today, scapegoating an innocent party in totality because of a presumed threat of an extreme minority in order to distract from real problems happening in the world. People didn't just lose their profession due to the Red Scare, they were ostracised by their peers, lost their homes, and some even died due to sickness or even suicide. And as Trumbo is more than willing to repeat, this actually happened. The knowledge of knowing that these events really happened, with some adjustments for the film, such as some real-life figures being combined into one character, changing the order of certain events, etc., makes the story all the more fascinating. As Trumbo weaves an engaging narrative with ever-evolving stakes, a well-thought-out structure, and a window into Dalton Trumbo's life for almost 15 years, as well as how his family had to endure the blacklist as Trumbo works slavishly, working for the low-budget Kings Brothers Productions, creating b movies movies to order whilst writing under alter egos. We bought a gorilla suit, we gotta use it, says Frank King. So Trumbo and his blacklisted friends had to write a movie that revolved around a gorilla. Leading the movie is Brian Cranston, who has come a long way since being Hal from Malcolm in the Middle. He's playing a very eccentric, over-the-top, speechifying character, but if you watch interviews of Dalton Trumbo and hear accounts from people who knew him, then you'll know that the portrayal is faithful to the larger-than-life screenwriter. He's preachy to a fault, as even his friends chastise him for the way that he talks, and his family find it difficult to cope with him during the last years of the blacklist. But his determination to fight such an oppressive and morally bankrupt opposition prevents him from losing too much sympathy. For an opponent as villainous as the blacklist, you need a larger-than-life hero, and Trumbo fits the bill, with Brian Cranston giving a wonderful performance to ground the character and imbue him with real sincerity. My favourite non-verbal moment of his is when his screenplay for Roman Holiday wins an Academy Award, but no one knows that he was the one who wrote it, and he's watching the award ceremony at home with his family on TV. It's so bittersweet, and the look on his face is equal parts inspiring and heartbreaking. 
There are a lot of supporting cast members and this is the main area where Trumbo does buckle under its own ambition. All the characters are well written, entertaining and wonderfully performed but because of how vast the cast are and the large amount of time that Trumbo spans, many key characters seem to disappear for long stretches and by the time they come back, it's hard to remember exactly what their role previously was. It also means that in the third act of the film, the conflict between Dalton and his family feels underdeveloped. I ultimately believed the drama because of how well it was performed and executed but it really needed more room to breathe, but the cast are great across the board. Helen Mirren does her best, Cruella de Vil as entertainment reporter Hedda Hopper, Diane Lane and Elle Fanning are great counterpoints to Brian Cranston's bombastic nature, while also being given a lot of dramatic and personal moments. Louis C.K. and Alan Tudyk are always welcome and are entertaining, and I wish there was more of them. And John Goodman gets a movie-stealing supporting role as the head of the King Brothers Productions, as a brash, foul-mouthed and violent piece of work. He gets some of the best lines of the movie, and his baseball bat scene had my screening roaring with laughter. Speaking of which, as dramatic and serious as the subject matter in Trumbo is, there's a lot of laughs to be had and many of the funniest lines being edited perfectly together and finding ways to humanise the cast through a very witty and endearing script by John McNamara. These are great roles and the cast are great throughout, but at 124 minutes, Trombo does feel a bit lacking in certain narrative elements. Not bad by any means, but the film easily could have been 10 or 15 minutes longer to give the other members of the Hollywood 10 more to do, or expanded on Dalton's other children as the movie's sole focus is on his eldest daughter Nicola. Much like Spotlight, Trombo may have benefited as a TV series because it's such a huge story. Admittedly, Trombo's intention is to expose the evil of the blacklist from one perspective. The movie makes makes it known that hundreds of thousands of people were affected and this is just one story, but it's such a big story that maybe a longer form of storytelling than a single movie might have been better, even though this movie still does find time to incorporate small human moments for its characters despite its hugely ambitious narrative. And yet, I found myself wholeheartedly loving the movie. I'll admit that a lot of that comes from a subjective love for movies about making movies in 1940s, 50s and 60s Los Angeles is brilliantly recreated and we get to see behind the scenes on many films and how filmmakers regarded their own work and what motivates Trombo's writing and his process. It's an affectionate movie that makes the complexity of the Hollywood blacklist accessible to a modern audience because it's still relevant today. It's something that should be common knowledge and the fact that it's a standalone movie with a credible ensemble cast means it will get in front of more people than a long-form, lower-budget TV series. And with a TV series, you wouldn't get a movie that looks this good. This is easily the most ambitious film that director Jay Roach has ever done, though it's still as politically charged and as righteous as his previous works. Trumbo brilliantly recreates that era of Hollywood, and over the course of the film, we see a lot of changes take place, as Dalton and the rest of the cast age throughout the film through subtle makeup and hairstyling effects, though Madison Wolf transforming into Elle Fanning over the course of one year is jarring, to say the least. The variety of locations when you stop and break down the actual beats of the story is huge and all of them are memorable and distinct. It's an incredibly well put together movie and the use of actual archive footage, Red Scare propaganda and the licensing of films that Trumbo worked on as well as some Hollywood stars showing up looking and acting scarily similar to their real life counterparts like Kirk Douglas, John Wayne and Otto Preminger makes the setting feel more immersive and genuine. Theodore Shapiro's score is incredibly understated but the choice of instruments and the minimalist style feels like a deliberate homage to 1950s drama movies making it appropriate to the time period. So after all of that, here's my conclusion. Trumbo is a tough movie for me to review because in terms of personal enjoyment and how much the movie resonated with me personally, I'd give it a 5 out of 5, but judged on its objective merits, it does feel like it's a bit overcome with the ambition of the narrative, meaning it misses many fine details. But at the same time, it's an incredibly relevant story that should be known about, with an endearing personality at its centre. The cast are great across the board, the screenplay is brimming with character, wit and biting social commentary, and I feel like in a time where people completely fail to grasp the concept of what free speech and censorship actually is, it's great to see a mainstream Hollywood awards contender tackle a story that Hollywood is notoriously embarrassed about. And so they should be. I give Trumbo four and a half stars out of five. The blacklist is alive and well, and so is the black market. We should all be prepared to go to prison. I don't think you're willing to lose all of this just to do the right thing. You don't end something like this by giving them what they have no right to ask. 
Hey folks, thanks for listening to my review. You can find these reviews a day early on my website, so be sure to visit www.trubby.com regularly where you can find a written version. I'm just experimenting with a new format, so let me know if you like these audio reviews to complement the written ones. Your feedback is greatly appreciated. But more importantly, what do you think of the film? Be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe for more movie-related analysis. Please hit that like button as it really, really helps me out, and you can support my content through Patreon for exclusive perks and rewards and updates. I'll see you folks next time.